I did not expect to cry at the end of The Boy in the Bubble and yet that is exactly what happened. Not necessarily because the story itself is emotional, although it is, but there are various factors in this that speak to me on a lot of levels and it just made me well up. I'm not going to spoil it, I'm not going to say exactly what happens at the end or even maybe the halfway point, but I do thoroughly recommend that you watch it. It is on YouTube, it's absolutely beautiful. This was released in 2011 and it's directed by Kaylin O'Rourke, narrated by the wonderful late Alan Rickman and it is one of the most amazing things that I have ever seen. This caught my eye. I saw the poster artwork on Letterboxd and I thought, alright, this looks like something that is going to be targeted at Tim Burton fans. The style of animation is not 100% exactly like Tim Burton's style, but you know the characters do have quite long spindly limbs, they do have quite large eyes. And the font used in the opening titles is the same as that's used for The Nightmare Before Christmas. So straight away, if you're a fan of Tim Burton, you are going to love this. And it definitely has that kind of vibe. I'm not going to compare it to any of Tim Burton's work because I don't know if the director... Well, I don't think you could create this without thinking of Tim Burton's works. There are too many similarities, but I don't want to compare it because that's not fair. Um, there's nothing to suggest that it's being made in Tim Burton's image, um, or at least nothing official. But if you do know anything about that, please feel free to let me know. For reference, this is produced by Igloo Films and was funded by Screen Ireland. And Alan Rickman narrates the story about this boy in the bubble. And this boy is called Rupert. He's a 10 year old boy who is bullied at school and he escapes into fiction primarily scary stories, horror stories, and one day there is a girl at school who catches his eye and we clearly see that he loves this girl and there's this beautiful moment. I, I don't want to go into too much detail but the animation for this is stupendous, it's utterly gorgeous. One of the most beautifully animated things I've ever seen but there's this moment where you know, he's wearing the classic black and white stripes um, and this heart comes out of his chest and it's just so stunning and it's absolutely gorgeous and the motif of the heart this bright red blood red heart we see frequently throughout this and it's absolutely gorgeous but we see that he wants to give his heart to this girl but things don't necessarily go to plan and he feels a lot of pain it does incorporate a magical element and it's about a spell that he does that involves this bubble and to be honest, I didn't like that aspect of it. I think the story would have been more raw and more emotive if they didn't incorporate magic because it kind of takes it out of being real. Not, yeah, you know, I can kind of see why it's included and it does make sense within the narrative. It's not that it doesn't make sense or that it's jarring or anything. But for me personally, I think involving magic takes away the fact that this is actually a very real situation for a lot of people and this boy represents many of us who have been in this situation who have felt like the outcast who have been bullied who don't who don't fit in or don't feel like we don't fit in at the very least so for me that aspect didn't work too well but it's not that it didn't fit in with the narrative i just found it i found that it took me out of the emotions for just a little bit but considering this entire thing is about eight minutes in length it's eight of the most beautiful minutes I have ever spent watching anything. Obviously, the narration is absolutely gorgeous. It's told in rhyme. And I love the fact that it's not they're not all end rhymes. Some of the rhymes are mid-sentence and it flows so beautifully. It scans gorgeously. It's absolutely stunning to listen to. And then you have this ridiculous animation that goes with it. It is the, one of the most beautifully animated things ever. Everywhere you look, there are gothic emblems and, quite frankly, quite a few nods to Tim Burton's films. Uh, I know I said I wouldn't compare it, and I'm not going to compare it directly, but you could play bingo with how many Tim Burton-esque things are in this. I don't think it's unreasonable to say that the director has been influenced by the works of Tim Burton. And rightly so. Tim Burton is my all-time favourite director, artist, etc., I absolutely love him and of course that's what drew me to this and of course the fact that it's um, narrated by Alan Rickman. I feel like my life has been more enriched for having seen this. The emotional journey I went on this 
on with this was wonderful and the reason as I said I kind of cried at the end of it is because it just it spoke to me and I felt for Rupert and then you're presenting this that's narrated by the wonderful late Alan Rickman and you have these this gorgeous imagery and this beautiful animation that does remind me of Tim Burton and I do love Tim Burton and it did make me emotional it's absolutely stunning it's one of the most beautiful things I have ever seen if you watch just one film today this week even this month if you have eight spare minutes please watch the boy in the bubble from start to finish it's breathtakingly beautiful gorgeously narrated the, the poem scans beautifully um, I'd, I'd quite like to read it without the animation um, I don't know if it's online anywhere the text for this but I'd be quite interested to see what that's like but the animation quality is just absolutely stunning Rupert is a character I love the imagery the motifs all of the nods to Tim Burton let's face it it's absolutely gorgeous the boy in the bubble caught my attention and I'm so glad it did and I'm so thankful to Killen O'Rourke for creating this because I feel better for having seen this. Please watch The Boy in the Bubble. It's absolutely stunning.